On first impressions, this hike is starting completely differently to the other three that we've done over the Easter Bank holiday weekend. The village that we've parked up in is gorgeous. It's properly chocolate box, really old buildings that are just stunning. So old that some of them, the walls are like completely crooked. But I think what's also really nice is that it seems to be very well stocked for hikers. So there's a pub, there's some tea rooms, there's a village shop that sells sandwiches. I wish I'd known about that because it'd have been really nice to have We've actually gone and shopped local, bought some sandwiches to take out onto the hike, but we just didn't realise and we went and got a Tesco's meal deal. There's also a really small car park that operates on an honesty box situation. So they just ask for a two pound donation and there's also some public toilets in there. And again, they just ask for a 20p donation. It also feels like we're much lower down here. Things just seem a little bit more green and a little bit more developed. So we've got things like flowers that I haven't seen in other parts of the Peak District so far. trail's taking us through a right of way through lots of farmers fields. It's predominantly surrounded by things like sheep, cows and crops. But one thing that we've just come across is a really small pond but there's a sign up which I think has been created by some local primary school children explaining that over the last 100 or so years about 75% of ponds in Britain have disappeared and unfortunately that's been really harmful for wildlife such as the great crested newt. It's an endangered species and as we've looked on into the pond I'm pretty sure that we've been able to see a few newts come up to the surface, grab at something and then dive back underneath again. Again, they can move approximately 500 meters from one pond to the next. So the conservation work that's going on in the White Peak part of the Peak District is trying to build more of these ponds that are 500 meters or less so that these newts can move between them. Those farmers fields were just gradually taking us up and up and then as soon as we've come out of them this pathway is now gradually taking us further down but there is quite a steep drop off on that side. I think if you were with young children you definitely want to be keeping a close eye on them at this point but because we are still relatively early on in spring the leaves haven't come onto the trees yet and it's just opened out to a really cool view of the viaduct. I think if you were coming though in summer or early autumn you'd need to wait a little bit before you'd be able to get that view over it. Charles brought us out to this very impressive view of both the viaduct and the valley as a whole. That viaduct was originally created by the Midland Railway so that the trains could run from London up to Manchester and that was in operation from 1863 until 1969 when eventually the railway line was closed. Up at the top here there's a hotel which back when the railway was in operation was known as the Railway Hotel. Victorian passengers would probably have stayed here as a stopover. The stables next door to the hotel and it said that there were horses in there that would bring the passengers from the train station down in the valley up to said hotel. And the cafe that's up here is also said that the workers of the railway line would often use that cafe. Obviously, as you can see today, it no longer is operational as a railway line and instead makes up part of the eight and a half mile Monsell Trail, which can be used by walkers, cyclists and horse riders too. pathway on all trails doesn't actually bring you down this side and instead you go across the top of the tunnel where the viaduct is and then you overshoot it. Andy had said that you wanted to do a slightly simpler hike because this afternoon slash evening we're going to have to drive all the way back to London so you didn't want to tucker us both completely out for the driving but I've asked him I was like please please can we just do a slight detour and he has agreed so we're going to head down this way so that we can at least sort of see the tunnels and see the viaduct from being on top of it.
we've just popped very briefly into the Headstone Tunnel just to see what it's like because there's actually six of them along the Monsell Trail and it takes people from Wydale which is quite close to Buxton along to Bakewell which is kind of where the Bakewell tart originally comes from or Bakewell pudding as they like to call it. What's really cool is that the six tunnels along this Monsell Trail are lit but they do turn off the lights at dusk. I personally don't understand why the All Trails Trail does not bring people down here. The view that you've got here is so much better than what we were getting on the trees. You get to see the tunnel, you get to actually walk across the viaduct. If you're watching this video because you're thinking about coming and doing this trail, I would strongly recommend just off-piecing ever so slightly because this is brilliant. This part of the walk has then taken us past a gorgeous weir. Now, one thing that's probably worth mentioning is it's exactly this point where had we followed the All Trails Trail, it would have brought us out. So there's really not been too much of a detour at all. I, growing up in Tyne and Weir, always thought that when you hear the word Weir when it comes to a river, I just thought that it was with regards to the River Weir, but I appreciate that's about W-E-A-R, whereas these Weirs are spelled W-E-I-R. And it turns out that it's a way in which the water can be controlled, so if they need for the water levels to be a little bit deeper for boats, they can help to make it deeper. And if there's the likelihood of flooding, it can also help control the amount of water that goes downstream to try and prevent said flooding. The further along that we've walked away from the weir, the crowds just seem to have completely died down. And I think a lot of people will go from the viaducts out to that and then maybe back again. There have been some parts where the grassy beds are sort of plateaued out towards the river so we have come across one or two people who've been picnicking or sunbathing and then we've also come across some really unusual flowers that we've never seen on our hikes in the UK before so that's been quite cool. If you know what they're called if you could leave a comment in the comment section letting me know because we're a little bit stumped on this one. I was just putting the camera up for a shot and a couple walked past us and he was saying, oh, are you about to like film coming through the kissing gate? And I was saying, yeah, and he was like, oh, great. You know, kept on walking. And then a couple of footsteps later, he said, it's not Caroline, is it? And I was like, yes. And he was like, I've been watching your Jordan videos. And this is the first time that I've ever been out in public and a member of the public has just stopped me and recognised me because of the YouTube videos. So obviously I'm just really, really elated at the moment. And I feel awful because I didn't actually catch what the chap's name was. So if you're watching this particular video, hi um, and thank you so much. You've absolutely made my day today. Both the description on the All Trails app, but also a lot of the reviews from people who've done this hike all warn that at this point in the hike, there is a very, very steep, relatively long uphill climb through the woods. And I guess we're starting it right now. I hope that we get some good views and there's a bit of a payoff for this effort. Well, the review said that it was going to be really, really steep, but as you can see, we are heading towards Ashford, which is where we started the hike with it being a circular. But I'm really pleased that we're not headed to Sheldon because it would be up that. I started off today's hike saying that the area that we'd come to today just feels very, very different to the areas that we've been hiking in over the last three days. And 
The more that we walk on this hike, the more that that becomes apparent. The greenness is so much more lush. You've got a lot more of the buds coming out. We've actually got ferns here. I mean, yesterday when we were walking across the moors, you could just see like the straw stems from last year. So there was absolutely no sign of any new ferns coming along anytime soon. And in these woods, we've got lots of flowers. I definitely recognize the primroses. And then there's a whole load of other wild ones that I'm just not familiar with. I guess just because we're lower down, spring has sprung here. <laughs> Andy, what can you smell right now? Garlic. Lots of garlic. Why do you think that might be? It says loads of wild garlic. This reminds me of both Scotland when we're on the Isle of Skye and also when we did that hike from Knoll Deer Park to Item Moat, but I kept on calling it Igatham and then everyone told me in the comments you're pronouncing it wrong. Charles taken us straight past this, which is the Ashford Bobbin Mill. It originally was used as a bone mill, and then later they believed that it was probably a mill for timber. As we head back towards Ashford in the water, the path is taking us alongside quite a main road. I haven't minded so much the noise of the cars just because it has been very dampened, but there is most definitely a group of motorcyclists who are just going back and forth, I guess because of how twisty and bendy it is. It must be a lot of fun on a motorcycle, but the engines are so incredibly loud. I think that maybe if you were to come on a slightly more fortunate day when you don't have the motorcyclists, it might not be quite as bad. We stopped off at the Bull's Head where Andy decided to go with roasted lamb after regretting not having gone for the lamb that I'd had two days prior at the Royal Oak. I went with the fish and chips and after devouring the Bakewell pudding at the other pub, we decided to try their Bakewell tart served with cream and I honestly couldn't pick a favourite between the two. Both very different but both equally as delicious.